Hey everybody, welcome back to Threading It Together. Uh, Lori Lipstein and Makai Gunn here from the Thread Team. And today we are talking about stewardship. And in particular, we're talking about when should you steward your donors? So Makai, what would you say? When, when should you steward your donors? I mean, isn't that kind of a trick question, Lori? Ah, I would get you. <laughs> it is a trick question. Yes, I mean, there's more than one when. Exactly. And okay, but what's the first one? That's fair. Okay, so I mean, we all think about the first one as like that receipt, right? But what is really important to think about is that the receipt isn't really stewardship. It's an acknowledgement of a donation, but the receipt in and of itself isn't a moment of stewardship. And yeah. so you can leverage the receipt to become a moment of stewardship. And so you can utilize the receipt and include, um, you know, your mission statement, maybe an impact of the gift, things along those lines. And that then can be that first point of stewardship. I agree. But, um, to your point, it shouldn't be the only point of stewardship exactly. or time of stewardship because especially those automated receipts, at this point in time, a lot of us know that that is coming from the system. Like a lot of people don't even open it. So even if you include those great lines in there, it's it's really in a moment where someone's feeling really transactional. They made their gift, they got their thing, they filed their receipt, like they move on. So um, beyond that, that at first moment, we really recommend Lining out what other moments you are going to follow up and um, thank your donors again, and not just thank you for the sake of thank you, but sharing the impact that their gift made so that they really stay connected to that, that moment in time of when they actually press send on the gift, but what does it really do in the long term? So, um, okay, so immediately with the receipt, but moving beyond that, Makai, where would you go next? Yeah, absolutely. And I think, I think the next for me, it depends upon the donor. So is this a first time donor or is this somebody who's maybe made gifts in the past? And so another opportunity to really uh, have a more personalized segmented approach to your stewardship is really looking at the who to make the decision about that next step. And so for first time donors, we love to recommend a welcome series. And so this can look like a couple of different things. Typically you want to kick off that welcome series for new time for first time donors, new donors within like a week of your first gift yeah. and then have it span anywhere from three to seven emails depending upon um, like your programs maybe where you are in your year of what else you can be sharing with them um, to Lori's earlier point so that it's not a transactional conversation but you're starting to build that relationship yeah. you're you're bringing them into all the other ways that they might be able to become involved with your organization um, and, and reminding so, them that they made the gift like people, exactly people's memories are short <laughs> <laughs> exactly it might seem crazy that someone how of course they wouldn't forget they gave to you they do if you if they gave and move on with their life and they don't hear from you past that receipt so the welcome series especially for first-time donors is a great way to kind of roll out a few communications where they're learning more about you and hearing from you um, and they don't forget mm -hmm. <laughs> absolutely um, and, and you can, you know, do something similar for those donors who are not necessarily first time donors, but to Lori's point, like, you know, keep them engaged. Don't let them forget that they made a gift to your organization and, and really do send a follow up communication. It doesn't have to be like a thank you necessarily. Um, but that next set of communications pretty quick after that first donation or that most recent donation for, um, for your recurring donor so that it stays top of mind. You know, we hear all the time in the data that, that in order for somebody to really remember, it's like seven to 10, even more touch yeah. points mm -hmm. of communication. So don't hesitate to send that email, you know, to re your recurring donors within week, two weeks, um, that first month, um, and leverage the other points that are happening in your organization around that same time, right? Is there another uh, program that they might be yeah. interested in? Again, um, kind of bringing them into the fold. And so also on the point of when, so we've got, you know, right away and then soon after mm -hmm. um but then you know what well, doesn't end there <laughs> keep going uh so we like to think of it as in in a way that you're not just like actually always scrambling to be thinking somebody but to kind of block it out on what will you do on a, on a weekly basis you know who do you need to talk to from last week how about last month um and then what maybe something special can you do once a quarter right to right. Just remember to check in with your, your donors, give them an update about your work. I mean, first and foremost, what they care about is the impact. So, you know, all of these check-ins are not just for the sake of checking in kind of shallowly. It's to keep them connected to the work and mm -hmm. to the impact. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and I think what's really great is that in that beginning, those time frames, the, the week, the month, that's in relationship to when, when they're making their gift, right? But then as we extend into further months or quarterly, you're folding them into regular communication. Mm -hmm. So it kind of steps away from the really personalized, depending upon when you made your first gift, to um, less, you know, less like manual need on your team's part or your part and more as a part of the standard yeah. communication. And remember the key, you can do it monthly, you can do it quarterly, whatever that might feel right for you. But remember the key is that you're doing it before you get the next gift. Yeah, that's, <laughs> and you're asking for the next gift. Yeah. You, you want the donor to hear from you, especially a thank you and then some more information before you ask them for their second or, you know, whatever number it might be gift. Yeah, that is, you know, when you boil it down, yeah, <laughs> that's exactly. all it's about. So there you have it as far as when to steward your donors, when to be in touch to say thank you. Uh, as Makai called out, trick question. It's not just one when, um, there's a few different times that you can keep thinking about that as an ongoing communication. Um, and for some ideas about what types of things you can do to keep that interesting, other tips and tricks around stewardship, um, check out the rest of our stewardship playlist and, and you know, for topics beyond stewardship, all kinds of fundraising fun, uh, please uh, check out the rest of our videos on YouTube, uh, follow and subscribe, and feel free to reach out to us directly if um, there's anything we can do to help you or if you've got a great idea that you want to share and see us turn that into a video. We, we welcome all input and questions. So <laughs> thanks for joining us today and we look forward to seeing you next time.